Good evening. I'm going to let folks find their seats. Hi. Welcome on, I think, what is really the first day of spring, given how nice it is. Welcome to the 14th. Yes, you can clap for spring. Um, <laughs> it has arrived. Welcome to the 14th annual last lecture. My name is Shannon Thibodeau. I'm a Guelph alumna and a staff person in student life, and we're so excited that you're all here today. Uh, on behalf of Student Life in the University, I wanted to acknowledge the Adirondack territory, the Adirondack people on whose traditional territory the main campus of the University of Guelph resides, as well as the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Métis friends and neighbors um, that we work with to strengthen our relationships here. So this is maybe not your actual last lecture, but close. I know for some of you, you may have had your last lecture of your undergraduate career already. So it's a huge milestone. And we're really excited to pull yourselves, other students, faculty, community members, members of our senior administration together to kind of celebrate um, what, what you've done and what comes next. So over the last four years or more, depending on the path you chose to completion, We've had the privilege of developing relationships with you, the class of 2015. Thanks for that, because it's been really fun. The last lecture began here at the University of Guelph truly in that way to celebrate all that you've done. And we hope that by the end of this evening, you feel like we've done that a little bit of justice. We know it's not a lot of time to pull together a celebration of all of your accomplishments, but we hope we get a little bit in there and start your path towards reflection. Before we really get the ball rolling, um, I wanted to introduce somebody who's going to offer an official welcome on behalf of the university, and that is our president and vice chancellor, Dr. Franco Vaccarino. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shannon. Let me, let me take this opportunity to welcome members of our, our senior administration, faculty and, and staff members, today's lecturers uh, and, and guests. You know, we have uh, family members here as well. And most important, our graduating students, as Shannon has uh, nicely highlighted. Now, uh, to the students, let me say that this last lecture really is intended to provide you with the opportunity, I would say, to, to pause and to reflect on your experiences and achievements here at the University of Guelph. It really is a wonderful uh, punctuation mark, today's event, in, in your University of Guelph uh, story. What you've learned, how you've changed uh, since you first arrived here, uh, who, you, who you have become through your time here on campus. You've learned all sorts of new things, developed new skills, probably uh, faced a few uh, challenges, I'm sure, along the way but at the same time also been granted very special and unique opportunities. You've gained a, a measure of, uh, of independence and, hope, and hopefully I'd say you, you have broadened uh, your own worldview. And maybe your own worldview uh, when you came in has been challenged and, and evolved uh, over your time here. You arrived here, here as students and, and while here you've become scholars. You've gained a deep and profound understanding of your own areas of study. And I'm sure you've also come to appreciate uh, the, the interconnectivity, the interconnectivity between different disciplines as well, and related to that, as well as the, the importance of perspective taking. You've learned about critical uh, thinking, about creative thinking, gaining the critical and creative skills you'll need to really look beyond, look beyond today's world and to keep on learning, keep on thinking and growing um, to become really our future, our future thinkers. And more than ever, success, uh, I, I do believe success in our world today will require you to keep learning, to blend ideas and knowledge from different disciplines and to apply them in fresh and exciting ways. That's key to, to innovation, it's key to renewal. And, um, I would also say that beyond learning about the world outside of you, I, I'm, I would hope that your experiences here at the university have allowed you to learn more about yourselves. Um, and I hope you've found a, what I would say is an elevated sense of meaning, of belonging, and, and, and your own sense of direction while you've been here. 
I also hope that you've learned from, from others along the way around you about the value and importance of different opinions and shared learning and discovery. And, you know, it's interesting, we think about different opinions and perspectives, and if you just oppose that to the concept of, um, of a, a common sense of purpose that we all share as a community, as a society, you might think, well, different perspectives, common sense of purpose, how do these two concepts come together? I think they come together because different perspectives, different viewpoints, understanding the complexity of, of problems elevates and deepens our common sense of purpose. It takes it to a new level, I think, of awareness and sophistication. And that brings us together as a community and as a society in a deeper and more profound uh, way. So in many ways, uh, your, your experiences here at the university have helped make you citizens of a much wider world. Now, there's of course one more thing you've become. You are now part of our family uh, of alumni here at the University of Guelph. And once a Griffin, as they say, always a griffin, friend uh, echoes. And as you leave here, remember that each of you carries what makes a griffin special. Sense of community and a sense of commitment to a better world. Students, scholars and thinkers, and always griffins. Thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Vaccarino. I'm gonna take a moment to change my perspective a little bit and move this podium because you're lovely, but we can't really see you quite as much because we're on a bit of an angle, so just a sec. Now, now I can also see people here a little bit more clearly and hopefully our lecturers can as well. So every year we choose a theme to sort of serve as an umbrella under which each of our lecturers will speak. This year we found a really interesting quote by a Canadian Olympian. She was the first Canadian to win an Olympic gold medal for Canada in cycling uh, and one of our first cycling medals uh, by a woman in Canada at all. And she won at the 2004 Olympics in Athens. Her name is Laurieann Wenzer. Uh, she's a pretty phenomenal person and still an active cyclist. And post uh, her win, she was giving an interview, as you do when you're an Olympian and you win a gold medal. And she actually said the quote, nothing's impossible, it's what you decide your limits are. And so we took inspiration from that for each of our lectures to speak under today, because that's how this evening sort of works. We've got three of them, and their challenge was to speak under that as their, as I said, umbrella. So one address is gonna be from a classmate of yours who's also in the final stretch of her degree, a few classes and assignments to go, and maybe some exams. Another is gonna be by one of our stellar faculty members. And the final one will be an address from a member of our alumni family who sat in seats like yours years ago, and I'm sure has fond memories of sitting in more mem for 8.30 lectures. Afterwards, when the lectures are done, if you don't have a 7 p.m. class to run off to, we do have a reception down in the basement, and there's one of those things I know you've come to appreciate while you've been here, which is free food. So let's get started. So every year, graduating students are invited to apply to be the last lecturer, and they actually compete for that position and are selected by a committee. This year's student exemplifies what the committee felt were a lot of the qualities we see in students across campus. She's very engaged, she's really curious, passionate, determined. She has a strong commitment to learning both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And she's also developed a really great ability to reflect on the past and her experiences in order to move forward. She's also demonstrated a commitment to getting involved from residence life staff, to being a peer helper, from doing business case study competitions through JDCC and DECAU, and even working with student volunteer connections. So please join me in welcoming your 2015 student last lecturer, Remy Marlat. Thank you for coming. Nothing's impossible. It's what you decide your limits are. So welcome students, staff, invited guests, and faculty. Welcome to the last lecture. I've attended this event for the past three years as a volunteer helping out with the lights and set up and take down as part of my position on the peer helper team called LEAD. And I always left feeling so motivated and energized. And I hope I can do the same for you today. 
I struggled a little bit of what to say. I mean, we're such a diverse group of people, different majors, hobbies, interests, values, and involvement on campus. And our limits that have challenged and tested us do vary. For some, it was academic or financial. Others, mental or physical. For some, still, it was your culture or your history. Regardless, we came to Guelph to study, and we've worked with our limits, and we've reached that goal of graduation. And now it's time for celebration and reflection. Finding inspiration is easy. I mean, it's all around us, on our campus, anyone that you're sitting beside. Last month, I attended the Guelph TEDx talk, and I got to hear speakers talk about their personal challenges and battles and how they overcame it. And the result was always positive, even if it wasn't the intended outcome. And what I learned from TEDx is that success doesn't come always wrapped up in a pretty bow and has nice paper. It's more like a continuous mental and physical challenge of walking up a flight of stairs. And when you get to the top, you realize that there's yet another set to tackle. And our handrails, our stairs have handrails, which are our support systems, and they're for us to lean on when we get tired and out of breath. Sometimes I run up a few flights of stairs really quick, and by the end I'm hunched over and grabbing onto them for dear life and trying to take a break for a little bit. Now this is a picture of me during my O-Week, where I'm running around at this point and trying to join every club and every O-Week activity possible. And I definitely learned after that to lean on my handrails some more. Now our personal levels of success are going to be rated differently. For some of you, you're going to have that amazing career, or maybe it's a great relationship, maybe you'll be a globetrotter, or find financial freedom, or some combination of this and more. It only matters that we keep climbing our staircase, though. Wise words were shared with me by a professor. She said, university teaches us to think critically, and I agree with her. That ability is what's going to raise us to that next level in the staircase. Now, I know I'm going to take two steps at a time as much as possible, but sometimes we have to slow down and go one step at a time after that, regardless of it never ending. And for each of you, your staircase is going to look different, made up of different materials and experiences, and your handrails made up of different supports. But even though we have these unique staircases, we all have a common bond. We've had years of stairs together. We've had steps that are the same from those first experiences. Maybe it was your first time coming to school, or leaving your family, O week. I mean, laundry, cooking, there's so much. Maybe it was trying to find a classroom, or what about getting signed into a class? I mean, that's a really long procedure, and like a treasure hunt to get all those signatures. But we did it. And for me, one of the things that I found was coming to residence. Now, I came to Mac Hall with a moving van and an actual van. And they got swarmed by OVs as soon as we got there. And I was really scared, and I didn't want my family to leave me. But at the same time, I had this intense desire to go meet every other girl in my residence and make friends. Now, it's these experiences, whether alone or with friends, that help us to grow. And Guelph has given us the opportunity to become independent, accountable, and somewhat responsible. I look back to first year, where I'm making a banner in the hallway during O-Week, to now, where I'm going out to conferences and competitions with my friends and representing Guelph. My hair's changed from blonde to brown. My body looks different. I wear blazers. My personality's changed. I have friends. I mean, everything's changing. <laughs> look at these goofs, and I'm one of them, and I'm loving it. These are my friends. We all have made so many different connections here. I feel like I'm on the path to the me who I want to be, and I'm not that same girl that went to Aggie Pub every single Wednesday in first year. And that's all we can really ask for, is for our staircases to do a Harry Potter-type move and crisscross with other peoples for those everlasting relationships. What it comes down to is that friendships that we've built here are everlasting. They're key, and we need to keep those relationships intact because we've experienced so many firsts together, and we're going to experience so many more. But we know that whatever comes our way, we can lean on our handrails that have been built stronger by our Griffin friends. Now, it's been a long five years of studying, exams, timelines, and sweating over the dance floor. But we've learned to rise to the occasion. And for some, it was easy. For others, hard. For some, still, it was just a do or die type situation. I'm just going to move that. <laughs> but it's our drive and determination that's been able to get us to this point and be successful. Now, I'm an average academic student. I spent more time on my extracurriculars. But I found that it's these experiences outside the classroom that have actually given me opportunities to share more inside the classroom. 
I pick things to volunteer for like United Way. And all of a sudden in my strategy class, I'm doing a not-for-profit case and able to give input that I didn't learn from a textbook. Or when I got to go to Cambodia last summer and bring to the culture into my international marketing class. I mean, it's these things, these lessons that we bring into the real world, our jobs, our life. This is happening, folks. We're, we actually have to apply what we've learned. And Guelph has given us that confidence to move forward in the next phases of our lives. We're adults, we make our own decisions, and we're gonna rise and fall with them. Now I start to share with you everything that I think is really exciting that we've done here at Guelph and how great it is that we're gonna be graduating, but I wanna share with you a time when I did something I never dreamed possible, and that's actually coming to university. Now I'm a smart person, I mean, I got to this point and, you know, graduating and I got into university, but sometimes it just takes me a little bit longer to understand things or write down my ideas. And in my case, that's called a learning disability. My family really realized pretty quickly when I was little that it took me a little too long to do my homework. And I tried to work harder and harder to try and overcompensate for it. And in grade 11, I got tested and it was a learning disability. Now, at this point in grade 11, I still want to be a gardener. And I think I was smart enough grade 12 I had this grand epiphany that I was going to go into business so I applied and I got in so you see anything that I've done since this moment is something I never expected to be able to do and I pushed at my limits and I I got here and I know I can't fail and I know it's the same for you we did the work we got in and we're gonna be leaving with degrees university has been a time for me to try out new things who knew that I could actually be good at presentations or problem-solving case competitions? Me, the girl that hates problem-solving puzzles or anything like that and writing like the plague. So I urge you to push a little more at your limits and work at expanding them. Because nothing really is impossible. We just change what our limits are. And the steps in our stairs are strong and our handrails are sturdy. Because of this adventure called university, I started to try things that I never even dreamed of before. Now, while I didn't change my major, I did change my career choice several times. I mean, here's a list of everything that I wanted to do since I came to university. So gardener, brewmaster, fundraiser. I mean, I would decide I was going to use my marketing degree to back up every other passion that I had. And I love how Guelph has given me the chance to pop my head into so many different doors. People change, dream change, and we grow. But either way, the next few years are going to be a mystery to us. Are you going to get to go on that dream trip? Are you going to have that career that you want? I mean, leaving Guelph is like leaving a community and a family that we built. And I love it. I love this community. So much so that when my friend came to visit from Western a few weekends ago for College Royal, I wanted to show her every single building possible that we walked around and wherever where I had a class and lived in residence. And as we're walking around, I noticed that she's not holding the door open for anyone. I was like, you know, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, at Guelph, we have this sort of unspoken rule where you hold the door open for someone no matter how far back they are, and they have to do that awkward sort of run to you. And it was like a foreign idea to her. And it's not that she doesn't have manners. It's just, you know, maybe Western's a little bit different in that community. <laughs> but in that moment, I was so proud to be a Griffin. And I know that walking down Weingart five years ago, I thought, mm, do I even know if this is really possible to come here? Is this the community that I want to be part of? And it's yes. I mean, I'm seeing the buildings. I'm thinking, what's that weird building with the tower in it? Where am I going to live? And all of a sudden, Johnston Hall, that's where I was in RA third year. Or Krillman, that's where I ate every single meal in first year with my friends. Or, oh, we'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or a Rapey House, where I worked for Student Volunteer Connections. I mean, these buildings and structures haven't really changed. It's just that they house our memories, and that's what's changing. We changed those buildings and made them memorable to us. And when we come back to visit down the line, they're going to feel different again. Griffins are myth and magic. We can make believe that this is a perfect world, but it's not. We shouldn't be fooled by the illusion that there's going to be no hardships on our journey. But it's from these challenges that we learn. And always remember that we have the power to go around things, over things, under things, and through things. And I know that I've never made the same mistake twice. I make it three, four, five, six times to make sure I've really learned that lesson. And Guelph has taught us more than just academic lessons. Our time here has given us the life lessons to succeed. And it's our personal differences and remodeling of those limits that make us so successful. 
So let's take these degrees, which we've earned. It's part of our ticket to making a difference. And it's up to you to decide what type of difference you want to make. Nothing's impossible. It's what you decide your limits are. And every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. We can't make that fatal mistake of not taking that first step or being too scared of what lies ahead. Embrace your staircase. I wish you the stars and galaxy beyond because this world is not big enough for all of our dreams. Thank you. Good job. So full disclosure, while I don't select the student last lecturer, Remy has been one of my peer helpers for the past three and a half years. <laughs> I'm really proud of you. And my other peers that are right there, <laughs> who are also all graduating this year. I'm going to be left by myself. Thanks a lot. You also spoke about some of the pieces about our community that I heard some giggles and some laughs and some ahs and some oohs because I think they do reflect with us. The door thing in particular, there's some awkward door running that happens from time to time on campus, but it is part of who we are um, and part of our community here to do those, time, those kinds of things because we care about each other. We have another person who's up for speaking, and this is really special as well. We asked the graduating class, um, you know, who do you want to be your last lecturer? And this is somebody who has consistently been on that list. And when their name rose to the top this year, I actually did a little woohoo in my office because they are funny, engaged, a phenomenal educator and researcher. And they joined our Griffin community back in 2004. And they actually came back because they did their master's here before moving away to do their PhD. So something about the door holding kind of engaged community struck this person. This person is Dr. Buckholtz or Dr. B. And I want to first apologize because we spelled her name incorrectly on the posters. And that's why she often goes by Dr. B. So we will fix that. And she is a faculty member in the Department of Family Relations and Applied Nutrition. She's an award-winning educator a comedic improviser, a puppy lover with a therapy dog, and a thought provoker and really innovator when it comes to teaching in the areas of learning around nutrition. And it is with really great pleasure that I invite Dr. B to the stage. Can you hear me if I stand away from the podium? I'm getting a thumbs up. That's terrific. Oh, is there a bit of feedback? Turn this one off. Is that good? All right. Um, thank you so much to Shannon for that very warm introduction. And thank you so much to whichever student because I'm sure there was probably just one or maybe two of you that nominated me um, this year. This, I, I'm humbled, I'm privileged, I'm delighted, I'm just tickled to have the opportunity to, um, to deliver um, your last lecture. Uh, so I'm going to start off with an admission, uh, an acknowledgement that I am not an elite athlete, um, much less um, an, a, a gold medal winning uh, cyclist, but that doesn't mean that you know, I can't relate to these words on the screen, and, and I'm sure we can all relate to them. I, I just do so from a different perspective because all I know about is uh, nutrition, and it's all I teach. So I will come back to these uh, words shortly, but for now, I'm going to offer a gentle reinterpretation of Lori Ann's words. So for the time being, instead of nothing's impossible, it's what you decide your limits are, I will just very briefly suggest a switch in focus to everything I needed to know about university I learned from the gastrointestinal <laughs> tract. Um, and, and for this first point, I, I actually would like for two um, members of the audience to come up and you don't have to say anything, you just have to hold either end of this rope and walk away from each other. Yes, at the back. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Hello. You can take that one and walk over there if you don't mind, Jay. And hi there. What's your name? Hillary. Hillary. Okay, you walk over there, Hillary. And I want you to hold this up. I'm sorry that it's, it's going to be a little tiring for your arms, but what Jay and Hillary are showing is the length of the digestive tract from mouth to, to that end over there. <laughs> and it's 26 feet long. And that is the length of the digestive tract in most people. Um, and uh, this, of course, happens after death when the muscles have relaxed and had a chance to elongate. And I'll thank you, Jay. I'll thank you, Hillary. You can let go now. Thank you very much. Um, and what I'm going to show you, what I, what I hope will become apparent, and please go ahead and have a seat. That's all you needed to do. Aw, Jay. Aw, sweet. Jay and I improvised together, so thank you. That was very special. Now he's totally thrown me off. What was I going to say? Ah, yes. Uh, so there are many digestive processes that happen in the body from the mouth to the anus, just as many things have happened to you during the last four years as a university student. <laughs> So if you'll indulge me, I'm just going to draw some parallels between the digestive process and what I perceive your university journey to have been. And to really do this justice, you know, we have to actually show a picture of the digestive tract. So we're going to start at the top and we're going to work our way down. All right. So um, when we consume food, when we chew food, we start to undergo the process of mechanical digestion, which is just a physiological way of saying that the tongue pushes the food around to allow the opportunity for the teeth to chomp on and sort of step on the food and break it down into smaller pieces. Yes, we, we do this regularly. Similarly, think back to your first weeks here on this university campus. Did you not feel pushed around and stomped on at times? Yes? All right, back to the body. Once we've chewed the food and adequately mixed it with saliva, it becomes what we call a bolus. It goes to the back of the mouth, uh, the pharynx. That triggers the swallow mechanism. And down goes the bolus through strong muscular contractions. And it gets squeezed through um, a sphincter called the lower esophageal sphincter, just at the base of the esophagus. It, it's what separates the esophagus from the stomach. So, uh, and then the bolus finds its way uh, into the stomach. So before you knew it, after those first few weeks in your first year, you too were swallowed up, right? You had assignments coming at you, you had projects, you had tests, you were pushed by forces stronger than yourself, but you prevailed, you squeezed through the lower esophageal sphincter of your first year, we call those final exams and you found yourself in the stomach, which is second year, right? <laughs> so, so the first thing I want you to notice about the stomach is there are several muscle layers and they lie on different planes. And there's a very good reason for that. It's done by design. And uh, what happens when the bolus enters the stomach is the stomach muscles, all these layers sort of contract and expand um, uh, it's sort of like an accordion and the food gets churned and turned uh, uh, upside down and eventually ends uh, at what we call the pyloric sphincter and eventually enters the small intestine. So similarly, you went through the lower esophageal sphincter of your first year, you ended up in the stomach of your second year churned and turned upside down, more tests, more projects, volunteer work, part-time jobs, scholarship applications, makeup, breakup. Oh. And there you are, about to enter third year. Look at you with that naive, foolish smile on your face. And wow, you're kind of skinny. Your mom's a little worried about you. You're losing some weight. But that's OK, because you're about halfway through the journey. You're going to now enter your third year of university. All right, back to the body for a moment. When the bolus leaves the stomach through that pyloric sphincter, it enters the small intestine, an amorphous sort of liquid, mushy mass called chyme. It's completely unrecognizable. 
And as it makes its way, the chyme makes its way through the labyrinth of the small intestine, it's here that we begin to see chemical digestion. And so what we see is the macronutrients, the energy, or the uh, protein rather, the carbohydrate, the fat, starting to be broken down and eventually be absorbed and nourish the body. But the small intestine does not work alone. It has accessory organs along the way to help it. So for example, the liver makes bile, it gets stored in the gallbladder, and eventually gets secreted into the small intestine. And its job, one of its jobs, is to pull dietary fat into solution to allow the third accessory organ, the pancreas, to secrete digestive enzymes and sort of break down that fat particle, allowing the fat to be absorbed. So the liver is an accessory organ, the gallbladder is an accessory organ, and the pancreas is, a, is an accessory organ. So similarly, as you were working your way through the labyrinth of third year, you also had some accessory organs, but instead of a liver, maybe you had a loving parent on whose shoulder you cried on occasion. Instead of a gallbladder, you made some great friends, and these are the people you went dancing with and had coffee with and uh, went to the movies with. And then finally, instead of the pancreas, you had some fun roommates, right? These are the people that you binge watched Breaking Bad with and Orange is the New Black, right? So the point is that you had help along the way, just like the small intestine requires help to carry out its digestive and absorptive capacities. All right, back to uh, the body for a moment. Eventually, the chyme leaves the small intestine and it travels into the colon. So we have the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon. And the, the job of the colon is to really pull any last bit of goodness from the food that we've consumed, right? So uh, that typically is water and electrolytes. And as the chyme makes its way across the colon, it goes from a liquid to a solid, leaving only that which will eventually be uh, excreted. You are in the colonic stages of your undergrad degree, right? Indeed altered, indeed changed. You have absorbed about as much from this institution as you can from your program, your major. You've absorbed knowledge and you've absorbed skills and confidence. And indeed, you have changed even in these last few months. So you are roughly around here, <laughs> the rectal stage, ready to be excreted into the world. <laughs> now I need to ask you something. Are any of you wondering, is she really going to go there? <laughs> How many of you think I'm going to go there? Ah, I see some. Okay, so about half of you. The other half desperately is wishing that I'm not going to go there. But indeed, no nutrition lecture with, would be complete without the Bristol stool chart. <laughs> and so, I invite you to reflect on the fact that sometimes university is hard to pass. Everything <laughs> is a strain. It's a push. And yet other times, university rushes by you. <laughs> the weeks and the months seemingly slipping away. Regardless of your journey, you're here. You made it to a smooth finish. And yes, maybe there were some lumps and cracks along the way, but you're ready to greet the world. All right, so much for drawing parallels between the digestive tract and your university journey, right? So if we come back to this impactful quote, 
I invite you to, to consider what would happen if your fourth year self were to go back in time to your first year. Well, first of all, let's look at your fourth year self. You know, you're older, you're wiser, you're a sage, you're a little grumpy and wrinkly. But beyond that, if you could go back to your first year self, so wide-eyed, so, so naive, so ready to face the world. And if you could tell your first year self, everything that was in store for you, the ups and downs and the good grades, the not so good grades, the makeups, the breakups, the deadlines, the tests. I mean, your first year self could very well have gone running for the hills, never to be seen again. But you're here. You're on the cusp of becoming university graduates. You have shown that indeed it is possible. And with the help of some accessory organs along the way, you really have made it to uh, a smooth finish. All right. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't leave you with some sort of serious, sort of, you know, all kidding aside, kind of um, uh, hopeful and helpful words of wisdom. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to draw these from the nutrition world. Um, and that is to say that, you know, is all the stress over? You know, absolutely not. I mean, I'm here to tell you that, uh, you know, you will continue to encounter challenges. You will continue to stretch and grow and push your limits beyond that which you thought was possible. But for those times when those stresses do hit, I do want you to remember that um, stressed is just dessert spelled backwards. <laughs> And on that note, thank you so much, and best wishes to the class of 2015. Thanks, Dr. B. I, get, I have the privilege of getting the slides ahead of time, and so I've just been waiting to kind of understand how that was all going to come together. <laughs> and I get it now. <laughs> I'm also consistently impressed with our faculty and how you have such passion for your area, for your topic and your discipline, and how you can make it about life in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. <laughs> that was very educational. Yeah. So our final lecture this evening um, is one of the members of our alumni family. And there's a little lesson that goes with this. So we've talked to you as like, you're going to be alumni. So that's the plural form of mixed gender members of our alumni family. But if you were, say, just a single female member of our alumni family, you would be an alumna. If you were a single male member of our alumni family, you'd be an alumnus. And then it gets really complicated with like multiples and it's like AE on the end and a whole bunch of other things. But I just thought it's important you know what to call yourself. So you're either an alumna, an alumnus, or sometimes I just say alum. It's a little bit easier. So our alumnus this year um, graduated a little while ago in the College of Biological Sciences with an honors Bachelor of Science degree and then went on to Queen's to pursue medical school, did, a did his residency in McGill, went to U of Ottawa for a time to do a fellowship, and actually ended up back in the neighborhood, more or less, down the road in Kitchener-Waterloo. So Dr. Michael Stevenson, or Dr. Michael, was, like a lot of you, an involved student on campus. He took it, I think, to a pretty good level, um, serving in a lot of leadership roles as president of Interhall Council, as a local affairs commissioner for the CSA, on lots of committees and initiatives that touched on a variety of topics, really interdisciplinary in nature. And now as a physician in KW, he serves a really marginalized and vulnerable population in our refugee population and is the founder and director of Sanctuary Refugee Health Center. It's also the time in my life where I've realized that it's people I went to undergrad with who are coming back as lecturers. <laughs> and this is one of those people. So it's with absolute pleasure and delight that I invite Dr. Michael Stevenson to the stage. Thank you so much. Just adjust the mic here. So, uh, Last time I, I gave a lecture at Guelph, um, it was, uh, I was an undergrad, like you guys, I was doing my, my last uh, talk for, for my honors thesis, and uh, 
I, uh, I came up with, with my slides and, and in fact, my slides were, were exactly the same format as the person previous to me, which kind of scarred me. Um, it's an awful way to start out a presentation, but up here in front of you right now, I'm realizing that there was no chance of me having the same lecture <laughs> as the one that you just saw. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I learned some things about the gastrointestinal tract. It's great. I can go tell my patients. But, uh, don't worry, you're just in the colon right now. <laughs> um, it's really, really great to be back here. Um, it's, it's really great to be back on campus, and it, it, it feels like home to me. Um, and it's, it's great that after 14 years of, of being away, walking around on campus and hearing all of the acronyms and, and slogans and what people are up to just seems so familiar. Um, it feels like even though I've been away for so long that I'm still a part of it. And if, if nothing else, I hope that in a few years from now, you'll come back um, and discover the same thing. Um, you know, the, the, the Guelph alumni community, I think, is really special. Um, I think there's something about this place that really breeds interesting um, people who do interesting things. Um, everywhere you go, uh, you'll meet other Griffins. You'll meet them doing all sorts of strange and unusual things, uh, most of which have to do with something that they're passionate about. And, I, and if, if, for, for, if you take nothing else from what I'm going to tell you today, go after that passion that you have developed over the last four or, if you're like me, five plus years. Um, nothing wrong with the victory lap, right? Right? Yeah. Um, find that passion and, and go for it. Um, some of you may know exactly what you want to do with the rest of your life. Is, is anyone in that category? Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. A couple of you actually were raising your hand and then I made fun of you. Uh, sorry about that. Um, for, for most of you, you don't know. And I, I think that's great. Um, and I would encourage you to explore, to wander, um, to go out there and find the things that, that appeal to you, that you're passionate about, that challenge you, and that make you happy. Um, and there's a lot in there that, that I just said. You know, happiness, I think we, we toss around a lot. We say, oh, you know, watching TV makes me happy, you know. Um, buying something makes me happy, whatever. But, but what I would encourage you to find is, is the thing that fulfills you, um, because that's where happiness comes from, um, is the feeling that you're doing something that you were meant to do, um, something that, that, um, that, that calls to you, really. Um, and, and, and look for that. You, you won't find it tomorrow. You won't find it next week. You probably won't find it this summer. If you do, congratulations. Um, but, but for most of you, it's going to take some wandering, um, and I think that's a really good thing. I, I want to tell you a story about a guy I went to, to medical school with. Um, his name is Ray. Um, he, he's a doctor now. Um, when he came to medical school, he was 47. 47. And, and the first week, we, we thought that one of the profs was sitting in the lecture hall with us, and <laughs> no one really wanted to go up to him and talk to him. But, you know, little by little, people sort of said, oh, he is in our class, and let's, let's go see what he's all about. Ray left school at age 15. Um, due to life circumstance, he, he could not continue in high school. Um, he was forced by family situation to go out and work. And, and for years and years and years, Ray worked at a, at a car plant, actually, um, in southwestern Ontario. Um, but he always had something in mind that he wanted to do. And so Ray worked on the line, and he worked his shift work. And, and one day they told him, you know what, Ray, We're, we have to shut down the plant. You can't work here anymore. So Ray was very sneaky. What did he do? He negotiated a lower severance package. He said, I'll take less money from you, but I want you to pay for my retraining. So they said, that's great, perfect. You know, so what are you going to do? Are you going to finish high school? And Ray said, yes, I'll finish high school. And then they got kind of nervous and said, well, are you going to go to university? Are you going to do your bachelor's? And Ray said, yes, I'm going to go do my bachelor's. And they said, well, are you going to go do a, a master's degree? And Ray said, yes, I'm going to go do a master's degree. And then they said, well, that's, that's it, right? You're not going to go any further. And Ray said, nope, I'm going to be a doctor. And that's what he did. He went for, to school for all those years after the fact to pursue what it was that he wanted to do. 
So I encourage you to wander. I encourage you to travel. I encourage you to, to explore things that appeal to you um, and, and find those things that, that you want to do. Um, you know, opportunities were, were, will come up every day, opportunities that will change your life and that will do... Um, that will allow you to do the things that you want to do. So, so if, you know, think of Ray. Think of what Ray did. Use those opportunities that come along to, to leverage what it is that you want to do. I want to talk about money. Boo. Boo money. Let's never pay our debts back. <laughs> money is important in life. You know, many, many of you do have debts. Many of you owe the bank substantial amounts. Um, banks don't forget how much you owe them. Take it from me. <laughs> um, you know, money is important, and, and we all have to do things to get money. Um, and don't, don't shy away from that. Don't, don't turn up opportunities because you want to seek some moral high ground of not accepting money. Um, but don't see money as the only thing. See money as the tool that it is, the tool that allows you to do the things that you want to do in life. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story about that in a minute. Really what, what I want you to think about is what your mark is going to be on the world, what your legacy will be. Um, you know, it's something that in your shoes back in 2001, seems like so long ago, um, wasn't though. But back in 2001, I was thinking a lot about what what do I want to do? What, how do I want to make my mark on the world? Um, and I, I had the opportunity to go to medical school, and, and I took that opportunity. Um, and I did, you know, I did my four years of, of, of medical school training. I went to class, you know, as I should. Made me a good doctor. So keep going to class. No, that's not the point. Um, you know, I, I went to my classes, but I always kind of looked around for what else is out there. Um, and I think that's something that, that came from Guelph. I think that curiosity, that that willingness to explore other things came from Guelph. I took, here, I took classes like Revolutions in the Modern World and Islamic History. I took Latin and Ethics and Philosophy. It's unusual for a, a biomedical science major. Um, but I hope that you have had the same experience of, of taking classes outside of your scope, things that have broadened your horizons. I tell you this because one day I was walking around in Kingston and I came across a poster um, that said that there was going to be a talk by a refugee. Um, and I, I knew nothing about Canada's refugee system. Um, I didn't really know what a refugee was. Um, but the poster looked interesting, so uh, I went. And I listened to a gentleman from Iran um, who had been through terrible things. Um, someone who uh, had been through the worst of humanity um, and now had come to Canada in order to, to heal. Um, he, he talked a lot about healing, um, and it, it, was a, it was a talk that appealed to me on a very fundamental level, about healing not just with medications and you know, the five-minute doctor visit, but, but healing as a process of, of humanization, of, of reclaiming um, one's identity and one's humanity. And I, I realized during that lecture that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help people find their humanity again. So I, I, I passed up opportunities to, to do residencies. I actually really made some people mad at Queen's um, because I rejected opportunities that... Oh, that is, um, rejected opportunities that I could have gone after that would have been financially lucrative, that would have been good for a career, um, that would have, you know, made my name for me. Um, and instead I, I went into family medicine, which was um, at Queen's frowned upon. Um, and I, I went into a program that, uh, or went to a site of, of training where I could serve refugees and I could help with that process of humanization. Um, I, I worked with refugees, I have worked with refugees since then, uh, first in Montreal and Toronto. Um, my wife got an academic posting in Waterloo and so we moved there uh, from Toronto. And, and nothing existed for refugees in the Kitchener region, in this region, in fact. Um, there were no clinics, there were nothing, uh, no, no formal uh, bodies there for healthcare. So I started something, um, and it started small. I actually worked in a church, uh, in, a, in a library of a church for six months. Um, I had no secretary, I had no nurse, I had no administrative staff. When you would call the clinic, you would call my cell phone, um, and that's, that's how it started. Um, little by little, we, we've expanded. Um, 
we have a nurse, we have a social worker, we have volunteers, um, we have people who make differences in other people's lives. Um, it's really hard. You know, some days are, you know, I, I do things that I don't expect to be doing. Um, I'm shoveling snow at eight o'clock in the morning so that my patients can get into the building. Um, you know, some days I, I have to learn about, um, you know, employment law. I have to learn about um, different aspects of, of running a clinic that I thought I would never have to use, never have to know about. Um, I, I don't make any money doing it. Um, so how do I live? Well, I have another job that I do. Um, and I work there two days a week in order to subsidize the work that I love, the work that I'm passionate about. And I, I hope that you would consider something like this in the future. I hope that you would consider finding what it is that you want your mark to be. Um, I hope that you would consider going out and going after it, even though you know, others will tell you it's not feasible or that it can't be done or it's never been done. Go out and do it. If you're passionate about it, it won't feel like work. You know, it, it'll feel uh, amazing. It'll feel amazingly rewarding. So think about that. What, what will your mark be? Again, you, you'll have a lot of decisions to make in the coming years. Um, you know, decisions that, that you, you'll make every day that may affect you for, for years to come. Remember University of Guelph. Remember the education that you received here. Remember the friends that you made here, the lessons. Remember the GI tract. You know, the things that, that appeal to you of this place, remember that. Take the lessons that you learned, the lessons about thinking critically, um, the lessons about looking at things differently, about using a broader approach or a narrower approach or a different approach, because that's what this place is about. I've been to lots of universities. This place is special. So take it with you wherever it is that you go. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dr. Mike. One of the very interesting things that happens when we um, sort of throw the challenge out to our lecturers of this one theme and these three different people is I think the magic of Guelph or the specialness of Guelph comes out with bits and pieces. So there's a thread that kind of gets drawn through. So there's a thread about community and about caring and about staying connected but also one that I like to think of as a bit more interdisciplinary about merging different opportunities and experiences and finding yourself all along that way. In the Department of Student Life, we have a little tagline um, and we talk about it um, often in the way that our programming runs and we say that the journey is the reward. That yes, there is an accomplishment at the end and for you coming up, that's graduation, good stuff. But it's the stuff you did along the way and the lessons you learned along the way that we hope you take with you, but you also come back with. <laughs> because we do, we do actually miss you when you go. We like the new ones that come in September and all that. That's great, move-in day, yay. <laughs> we don't know them yet, we know you. And you are a part of our family, so we do want you to come back. So please take to heart what our lecturers have said and what I'm saying, which is that you truly are, and what Dr. Recarino said, you are a member of our Griffin family, forever a Griffin, and we expect to have you back and to hear about your successes and your challenges and the opportunities that you've walked through and created for yourself as Mike has created for him and the people that he works with and serves. So here's the fun part too. You have convocation in June, you'll be back in this room. You might not be sitting with the people you are now, you might sit with the people who come before and after you in the alphabet based on your program and major. And you're going to walk across this stage and you're going to get hooded from behind, which is what that's called. You get that beautiful bit of color that shows the world what it is that you've accomplished as a member of our family. But until then, I know you have a little bit left to do. And so I suggest we start it off with some food downstairs and an opportunity to mix and mingle and celebrate a little bit more. So that means this is the end of your last lecture. Thanks very much and all the best.